Many people have heard about COVID, but don't really know what it provides. Today, we'll ask an expert to answer the question, what is COVID exactly? So before I explain what COVID is, let me just um, explain why we created COVID in the first place and what the purpose that it solves. And also just to explain the nature of IT in organizations these days. IT is pretty well part of every business activity and uh, is pervasive across all of our uh, organizations. And the odd thing is that you know, success in a business is driven mostly by the business processes that they follow. And that's a given in most organizations. People know how to set their goals, organize their activities, and drive quality into the delivery of their products and services. <clears throat> Oddly, with IT, that's generally not the case. Unfortunately, IT is often not successful. Things can go wrong. And then the consequence, of course, is that uh, IT, if IT doesn't go well, then the business won't go well. So what we tried to drive into the COVID thinking was how to enable enterprises to apply the same mentality that they do to their normal business activities to the world of IT, not treat it as a strange black box, but to work with it just like they would any other aspect of their business. So COVID provides guidance on how to organize the activities that relate to IT within all business activities properly and uh, reliably. Because at the end of the day, management want predictability and reliability and certainty so that they know things will happen as they expect them to happen. So what actually is COVID? What does it consist of? Well, broadly, there are three key parts. Firstly, there's a model, a process model, that helps enterprises understand the nature of all these activities that relate to IT and how to organize them in such a way that they can be reliably performed and understood by all the people that need to um, be involved with that. So things like managing a change, defining a strategy, or even something operational like running the service desk is done in such a way that it's clear what that process should do, how it's organized, and who should take part. Then the second part is making sure that those activities and those processes perform properly and adhere to what we call best practice or good practice. So the COVID approach is to provide guidance on what to do in each of these processes in alignment with recognized good practice. And you know, this is not at the very detailed level of technical design and, and actual procedure, but it's emphasizing what's important to do and what needs to be done to make sure those processes work well. And then the third part of the COVID approach is to give management tools so that they know whether or not this is actually happening in practice. And, and this is done in, in two ways. One is to measure the quality of those processes using what we call capability maturity techniques so that management can tell whether or not a process is actually at the level required for a given situation. And of course, and this depends on the environment and the nature of, of the business and how significant IT really is. And also tools to clearly set objectives around what IT needs to do to drive good results and successful outcomes. So setting goals and objectives and then being able to monitor those with quality, uh, easy to understand metrics. So that's the third part of the COVID approach. So just remember, success doesn't happen by chance. Enterprises don't do well by accident. And as Gary Player once said, you know, the more I practice, the luckier I get. It's really down to doing things well, doing things reliably, and management being confident that outcomes will happen as they expect. And that's what COBIT is there to provide. <clears throat> it provides good process, good objectives, and good practice, and tools for management to make sure it will happen. <clears throat>